All right, we're live for the Mike and Mario Show, Friday edition. Excited to be back. Uh, Took a couple weeks off, but yet we're back once again. As always, Mario, it's good to connect with you. And uh, looking forward to, you know, getting caught up what's happening in your world and, of course, vice versa on this side of the world as well. So before we move forward, uh, how you been doing, my friend? Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks since we spoke and people were concerned, but uh, we just had uh, schedule conflicts. But, uh, no, I'm doing well. I've had a nice day. I played golf this morning, so... Uh, I actually didn't post my normal video, but I think sometimes it's good to get out there and smell smell the flowers. Right. <laughs> because if you, her, if you sit, sit in front of the screen watching and reading about all the rubbish that's going on in the world is a bit too much sometimes. Right. It could definitely drive you crazy just because there's never a dull moment. There's always something to talk about. So we got maybe three, four subjects on the table here that we'll just scan over and share our two cents on. And as always, for those uh, tuning in, feel free to throw out some thoughts, ideas, suggestions, whatever you're keeping your eye on as well. And uh, bring that to the table. We can have a little back and forth as well. And uh, let's just jump right in, man. So the central banks around the world are having issues, I think controlling the narrative and so we got the federal reserve here uk in your neck of the woods we got the ecb all trying to i guess brace for and control this landing of whatever type and it's not working the way that i think they want it to but uh, we, we, i think people are starting to see through the lies and so we'll thumb through a couple headlines here and so very first one here it ha- happens to be a follow-up from the jackson hole speech of which uh the federal reserve chairman was actually honest in saying that the consumers or the people will experience pain, but of course he didn't go into greater detail as to how that w- and what it will look like. But it says fair uh, Fed Chair Powell says inflation fight could create a heavy burden for Americans. So w- what do you think this burden all entails without even diving deeper into this? Yeah, it's funny because I think last year he said that uh, inflation doesn't really hurt people. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> now he's, temporary, he, short-lived. he's admitting it. He also said that uh, we we really don't know much about inflation. So he mm-hmm. doesn't. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, that, that is normal. What he said, I guess that is a, an honest ad- admission by him. Yeah, and yeah. inflation uh, usually helps the, the wealthy who have assets mm-hmm. and who have access to the, uh, the credit uh, spigot. Yeah, uh, from the central bank, but uh, people on the fringes, uh, people that are not as well off, they suffer. Yeah. And uh, you you spoke about as well, I think before we came on about the fact that uh, there will be a lot of job losses mm-hmm. probably because of inflation. And uh, I think uh, someone mentioned uh, during my live stream earlier today. Uh, that uh, Powell said that one way to bring down inflation is to create unemployment or something like to that effect. And I said that uh, a lot of the jobs that have been created in the last two and a half years or so, or three years with all the the easy credit, they're not real uh, productive jobs. They're jobs more to do with uh, spending and uh, discretionary spending like uh, luxuries, holidays, restaurants and uh, 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 how can I say, uh, yeah, all, all that kind of sector of the, bit, uh, of the economy. So if you pull uh, the plug on, on the credit, uh, of course, a lot of people are going to stop doing those things and a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. Right. Uh, so, But in a healthy economy, uh, prob- when you have sound money and uh, the economy grow and it's balanced, you have uh, manufacturing, you have a service economy, you have like a a financial part of the economy which doesn't dominate, then uh, you create uh, nor good jobs. And if the economy is doing well, actually inflation doesn't go up. Right. So it, it's all kind of screwed up. Right. But uh, I, I think he's right that people are going to suffer. Uh, the The question is whether the central banks, the Fed included, uh, can really. Uh, slay the dragon of inflation because uh we know that they created so much currency and credit in the last 15 years that uh to really uh go back to normal like to prior to the 08 crisis their balance sheet was less than a trillion the fed Uh, can you imagine they try to go back to a trillion balance sheet from nine trillion it's gonna decimate everything so uh, i i think like you said he's just trying to talk uh talk tough right and i think a lot of it has to do with 
you know, just tight monetary conditions. Like literally right now, by them no longer supporting, outright supporting the economy. And even I'll, I'll share this uh, from Mish talk uh, about the quantitative easing, what little has taken place is, is very minuscule in nature. But one thing I did notice is the the report, of, uh, tightening. Yeah. I'm sorry. You said quantitative easing. Is the I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I meant tightening. Yeah. And so even, even with the little, the, the minuscule changes that have taken place over the last couple of weeks, for whatever it's worth, the mortgage-backed security side of things have actually increased. And so they're still supporting the housing sector on top of all the, that's just one particular yeah. area. But overall, the entire economy is based upon consumption and people are, they're not consuming the way they used to. And so we're already experiencing the, the, uh, uh, the beginnings of what will become a major problem down the line as far as this heavy pain that they're referring to just yeah. because confidence is no longer there overall. So it's interesting to see how, you know, they're, uh, they're talking the talk and they're trying to walk it, but in doing so will cause pain in of itself just because, you know, no easy credit, no economy. And that's basically what it boils down to. So. I still uh, think uh, though, if you look at the data, I haven't looked at it in a while, but a few <laughs> weeks ago, someone showed that consumer credit is still growing. You know, so people are still borrowing, yeah. uh, probably because they have to borrow to to buy uh, basic necessities. Now, it's not like the borrowing to like go on holidays and stuff that people used to do during the housing boom. So but uh, yeah. All right. So and that's, that's a great point. So as of right now, uh, let me see. I, ha I noticed that, you know, there's been more credit cards taken out over the last couple of months or I think within this year than all times. But yet the people people are using them for mere survival, rather like for a, you know makes basically making up the difference in differences in the lack of income that they don't no longer have. So literally, it's just piling on more debt, which is not a productive <laughs> was not yeah. productive whatsoever. So that's uh, well, uh, that's a sign of a lot of pain. I saw w one of the um, mortgage providers in the was it uh, I don't know Wells Fargo or someone they're offering a, a zero zero down mortgages to minorities correct <laughs> so, i talked about that so it, it's it's a it's a pilot program and they're doing it in a lot of the so detroit uh charlotte and atlanta another a lot of other serious areas where it's heavily concentrated amongst hispanic as well as the black communities and so they're trying to basically give people an incentive to get into these housings and i was talking about here in detroit how you know if you're actually talking about the city of detroit Majority of those areas are not places where you would want to take out debt, a or live or try to raise a family, just because the city's been hollowed out. So more people have gone to the suburban areas than actually the city, just because of safety and everything else. The, the cities have been hollowed out. There's more abandoned buildings along the streets of what used to be major retail hubs. It, it's gone. Like it's 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 sad to go through areas where I grew up at and see yeah. vacant buildings. And these are all Democrat run <laughs> correct correct and it's just amazing to see how they're now trying to incentivize people by saying you know that we won't check your credit score you know no down payment no this no this long as you have paid your cell phone bill you've been on time with your rent and your car note is up to snuff we'll you know give you you know a mortgage and there's no minimum or no maximum according to what i saw so imagine you know people it's, it's only natural to want to take on more than you actually can afford to pay just because it's available so yeah, man, it's crazy, but it's predatory lending in a yeah, sense. Yeah, really. and a lot of a lot of the people that they're gonna focus on to provide these mortgages, they won't know. They think they will think it's a good deal. Oh, I'll be able to buy this big house because mm -hmm. they haven't been uh, taught about these things. I would say I'm right. not trying to be. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, they probably don't have the best. Uh, education in, in financial uh, affairs. So right. like you said, it's predatory and I think it's wrong because you um, it's, it, it happened uh, from in the early 2000s when you mm -hmm. had the housing boom. People mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. like uh, lap dancers were buying five properties. Do you remember that, <laughs> from, that woman from uh, the big short? They, the guy was talking to her about uh, the, her mortgage and 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 then he said so uh how much do you pay for your house and said no i have five mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so yeah. it's crazy oh my god and, and on, on top of that just talking you know just the, the the debt market itself here's a little headline here 
um, talking about the treasury yields and mortgage rates are rising. And so not only are they trying to get get give people debt, but they're they ain't no telling what the actual rates will be because they're, the qualifications are completely different than normal times. So they're not going according to your credit and things like that. So I'd imagine the mortgage rates for those properties that they'll be trying to get people in are going to be higher than normal, I assume. Mm. And so I think the average as of now has gotten back up to the 6%-ish realm. And so when you see this graph here, with this detailed information here to your treasury yield and a 30 mortgage rate uh, going up, what, what, what comes to mind for you? <laughs> well, uh, that uh, that previous headline said that uh, yields went up because the, F the Fed's going to be tough on inflation. But mm -hmm. if they were really tough on inflation, the longer term yields actually would probably not be going up that much because uh, bond investors would have confidence and say they would say, oh, the Fed is being tough on inflation, so we don't have to sell these bonds. Yeah. So uh, I actually think that headline is a little bit uh, erroneous. Right. Uh, well, I, yeah, and Treasury yields have risen uh, from under 3% a few weeks ago to now almost 3.3. I think we're at three and a quarter right now. We've come off a little bit today after the jobs data. The jobs data were in line. But there's a, a drop from the previous month uh, from 520,000 to about 315. The unemployment rate went up. So mm -hmm. maybe uh, the markets are uh, today they've bought back some treasuries. But yeah, and uh, the treasury yields, they're the benchmark for all other kinds of uh, securitized loans like mortgage backed securities. So it's reflected even more on, on those um, securities. So you, you have yields go up and that, that means that uh, it becomes more uh, expensive to uh, afford to buy a home. And the same thing's happening here in the UK. Yeah, so here's a headline. U.S. hiring slows but remains strong as the economy adds 315,000 jobs. So, Well, these are hypothetical jobs because <laughs> this is a survey done by the BLS. You know, they, <laughs> they call a few companies around the country and then they uh, they uh, they project, you know, they, they make estimates. All right. So, I don't really think it created that many jobs, but and uh, then and, and then it says here the unemployment rate rising to three point seven percent. So the fact that the unemployment has gone up, you know, it still says it remains strong overall. It's like, come on now, like wow. you can sell anything nowadays, and people. Don't the other thing is, while well, that three point seven percent, it uh, looks low, but um, so many people have given up looking mm -hmm. for a job. They haven't, They're so they don't, they don't count. Yeah. Right. They're no longer qualified to be counted because they're out of the market. They, they just gave yeah. up on looking. And I world. think uh, I saw recently uh, last last month or the month before that a lot of people now, they need to have two jobs. So they it, so if you if one person has two or three jobs, that counts as three, uh, you know, uh, 315,003. Yeah. So <laughs> that's not a good sign that people have to have more than one job. Right. I do agree. Now let's uh, continue on. Um, I want to bring up that uh, the ECB, and so this is what well, this is a very detailed article here. But it, it looks like they're having problems servicing the Italian crises is unfolding, and they're talking about the special vehicle they created to address that is no longer plausible. So they might be dialing back from that. Therefore. They could have an Italian debt crisis similar to like they did a decade plus. But then again, one thing I noticed in this article here is talking about uh, the ECB in reference to purchasing power of currencies. And they're talking about the it's their responsibility to make sure that people still have confidence in the purchasing power of the currency. Yeah, that, that was the uh, that was uh, Mrs. Schnabel. She's the head of the Bundesbank, which is the German central bank. And uh, the German central bank, uh, they historically pr prior to the euro and i remember that because i worked in in the markets and uh, uh -huh. the bundesbank they were like they were mega hawk you know mm -hmm. they made uh paul volcker look like a dove you yeah. know they're really tough because germany has a history of inflation in the last hundred years mm. so but and it looks like now they're fed up the bundesbank and saying you know we can't keep bailing out italy uh, and, and at the expense of the in inflation. And it's what is significant about the Jackson Hole speech by that Bundesbank uh, 
lady is that uh, she was the one representing the ECB, not Christine Lagarde. And right. in that article, one of the uh, guys there, one of the analysts from said that, uh, or someone close to the ECB said that uh, people are losing faith within the ECB, faith mm -hmm. in um, uh, Christine Lagarde, that she has no credibility. So right. uh, that, that could be quite serious for all the markets not just the euro and their bond markets but it could affect treasuries yeah yeah so it says the ecb is in the worst internal disarray since the death of the eurozone debt crisis hawks and doves are contradicting each other on a daily and fundamental strategy markets have no idea how the new anti-spread tool to protect italy is supposed to work it is complete shambles christian agar has lost control and is now showing is not showing any leadership so once again, like the fact that she was put in that position without any type of vote or consensus, she was chosen, qualified. I doubt. I doubt that yeah, she was a lawyer, right? So she has no monetary, economic, financial background whatsoever, but she was put in that position. So it, it's bound to fail. So the, you know, the, basically, the European Union and that whole experiment is unraveling uh, in, in real time. Not only mentioned the concerns with the currency there, but then also I saw something about the, uh, the in UK, the British pound. Also, I heard about the. It approaching parity with the dollar as well so that definitely has some ramifications but let's touch a little bit on what's happening in the uk man uh i touched on the energy crises and things like that and seeing a lot of bills and stuff that just looks very un unpleasant man but are you experiencing in your neck of the woods directly as far as stuff closing down people complaining about bills and stuff like that um yeah i mean i live uh in greater london but outside the you know in the suburbs yeah so it's pretty normal here but uh, you read about the fact that uh, people expect half of all pubs to close in the uk this yeah. winter because and you read stories about uh small businesses like a uh, small cafes mm -hmm. who's uh i saw one that uh the electricity bill for it has gone from 500 pounds a week to 1500. This is a little cafe where they sell coffees, croissants, and uh, they're not going to be able to survive. And, right. and a lot of smaller companies like that, they, uh, they employ a lot of people. People mm -hmm. think that uh, big corporations employ the most people, but it's not. It's the small, medium-sized businesses that create the jobs. And they, they, uh, they're, they're, more they're nicer to their employees because it's more like a family right. when you work for a big corporation you could lose your job anytime because they just decide on the numbers so uh in terms of uh yeah we noticed that things are getting more expensive uh food and uh stuff like that the uh first of october will be like when you get the new uh, bills for uh, gas uh and electric mm -hmm. um, right now our bills haven't really risen that much but i expect them to and uh i think we'll be fine uh luckily because i think we've been careful and uh, we haven't gotten into debt and we make sure we have a, a budget and a good income but a lot of people uh, i saw uh, on TikTok the other day uh, this guy talking about a teacher here in the uk a young guy maybe in his 30s, earning about 33,000 pounds a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, he moved to uh, Dubai to, to teach there because after all the taxes, all, all the rent, all the stuff here, he only had 170 pounds left at the end of the month. Dang. So if you got energy prices going up through the roof, that's going to cut into that 170. People are going to be, and this is uh, 33,000 is a, relatively good salary it's not great but uh i would say the average is like in the 20s mm -hmm. so people are going to be hurt and, and get in dubai apparently he he can still he he has 1500 pounds left after the end of the month he's on a thousand pounds less a year mm -hmm. the reason why um he's doing well there is because there's no taxes in dubai mm -hmm. and uh every teacher gets free accommodation so Right. That's that's called the brain drain, you know, and that doesn't help. Right. And I, I, think, I know, especially when, when it comes to Middle East uh, and all of all those nations, you know, employing uh, Western uh, uh, um, uh, employees, whether it be in the medical field, tech, tech sector, whatever, you know, like you, you get brought over there, you get paid well, you know, all your living expenses is free. And it's like you could make a good. Punch yeah, the no, over there, so. no tax. You work there for 10 years. You save uh, you save uh 
good money and you'd come back, you know, and you, you could, uh, you're set up, right. but, uh, it's a shame that, um, in the UK, uh, everything, the taxes are high. It's not just income tax and VAT, but it's all the other taxes added uh, to, to everything. Right. And uh, the, the state is too big. Yeah. And so as of now, based upon all the confusion between or, or the narrative they're using between Russia and Ukraine as a primary catalyst for all this energy crisis, uh, they're continually setting up narratives for social unrest. So here's another headline. Uh, it says rising energy prices could fuel social unrest across Europe this winter. And so beyond the bill side of things, even within Europe itself, I haven't covered a lot of the other countries, but I assume it's similar, you know, especially I know Germany. Yeah. For- a lot of people here are, uh, there are protests and this is from Reuters and you saw that protest there was here in the UK. Yeah. And uh, there's a campaign here also not to pay your utility bills, which is, mm-hmm which is silly because they're going to cut you off. Right. But uh, I, I've noticed that a lot of people are putting the blame on Russia, mm-hmm. on Brexit, uh, and on the uh, energy companies. They say, oh, they're making too many, too, too much profits. But the uh, big energy companies, if you look at all their uh, all the numbers, their no. profits are very small right. <laughs> compared right. to all the... Uh, and uh, yeah, but the government doesn't mind that because the people to blame... Uh, well, it's the government mm-hmm. <laughs> deficit spending, the you know, all the debt that they took on uh, through that COVID pandemic, and then the central bank, which obliged by keeping rates at zero and printing. Right. We printed here, I think, six hundred trillion, uh, six hundred billion, mm-hmm. sorry, pounds, mm-hmm. which at the time was almost like a a trillion dollars, mm-hmm. which is huge for a, an economy that is just over uh, two. Two trillion pounds GDP. Mm-hmm. I mean, you are going to get the currency is going to fall through the floor. Yeah, but people don't understand that, and they're you know they believe everything they uh, hear in oh. on the BBC or that they read in the Daily Mail or right. or the Sun newspaper. Yeah, here and so in this headline here, one thing that stood out to me uh, about uh, social unrest this winter. And so here's a survey or analysis from a survey. It says uh, latest reports on its civil unrest index found that more than 50 percent of almost 200 countries uh, covered experiences, increases in uh, mass mobilization risk between second and third quarter of 2022. So almost half. So basically roughly 100 countries all had some type of mobilization and protest in the streets mm. where they were. You know, expressing their displeasure and the cost of living and stuff like that. So I'm like, that's 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 a lot, but it's still small in comparison to where they're trying to steer this. So it's like, ah, we really ain't seen much yet, and we haven't had any of that outright in here in the U.S. Even though people are you know, are experiencing some difficulty as well, so it's unfortunate. But it's a part of this transition they're trying to take the world through, man. Um, but let's keep moving. Uh, let's talk about and how this could get even worse. And I, t- I touched on this a little bit last night, but uh, they're meeting today with the G7 nations to, I guess, further this oil cap, Russian oil cap. And they basically said that if you do that, you know, we're cutting you off, period, from Russian energy, which will cause more pain. <laughs> and so it's like they're deliberately trying to do this and they're disguising it as like it's going to be helpful. It's going to keep inflation low and like, you know, how they try to sell it is it's, it's comical, but not surprising whatsoever, man. Well, I think the uh, G7 and NATO, uh, by now they've shot both their feet feet off everywhere. Yeah. Now they're starting to shoot their, their legs off <laughs> by doing this kind of stuff. Uh, all this is going to do, the Russians said, we're, gonna, we're not going to sell oil mm-hmm. to anyone who caps our price. Uh, it's going to lead to higher prices. Mm-hmm. I think crude oil is up today. Let's have a look. Uh, let me check here. Uh yeah, it's going to increase oil prices, and the Russians are just going to find someone else to sell to. Yeah. So crude is up over 2%, so uh, not surprising. Um, they, uh, uh, yeah, it looks like they are on a mission to just uh, – you know, and that's why sometimes people think it's done by design, just a, a mission to bring down the West Yeah. so that they can try to offer us the Great Reset. That's what it feels like. Yeah, I think these are all steps that they use to help 
execute that agenda of resetting things because clearly we can see just from how the central banks are scrambling now to maintain and to paint a narrative of a landing like as i mentioned earlier but also governments are losing people are losing confidence in government and so now we got in this country because of the midterm situation oh. we got biden's little speech and you know basically calling out people who love their country and painting them as terrorists and all types of crazy stuff it's you know it, it is man like how desperate can you be but I, I, we all know this is all a ploy to distract people from the reality because I mean, it'd be hard to forget how prior to this current time frame, as I mentioned earlier, with, you know, defund the police, Black Lives, all those organizations that they use to cause chaos. All of a sudden now they want to disown all that and make it appear as if that was on the right side. Yeah. And they're saying the people uh, on the other side that are causing the chaos and it's a uh, total, total rubbish. It was, uh, under Biden that uh, they forced, provoked uh, this uh, war in the mm -hmm. Ukraine. Uh, I, I don't think under Trump, there wouldn't, we wouldn't have had this Ukraine war. Right. And I'm not political, but I don't think we would because I think uh, under Trump, he was the first president to not have started a war. Right. And you could argue that Putin started this war, but I think the West provoked him into this war. Right. And on top of that, based upon all the alternative information that comes out about uh, some of the primary targets up front as to what Russia was focusing on, it happened to line up with a lot of Western controlled uh, uh, facilities and things of that nature. So it, it looked like literally Putin was protecting his own country's interests initially by alleviating some of the Western puppet projects that they had in play over there and by now i think even the pentagon came out and mentioned that they have some testing facilities for all types of things over there i'm like well why would you be doing that type of stuff on their border unless you're trying to piss them off and they mm -hmm. decided to respond so you know i'm on top of all types of other things out there but yeah man interesting times we're in um let's open up and get some questions if you want to we got a couple more articles here but we can just get some questions Mm. Uh, feel free to throw out some ideas or thoughts, whatever else you guys are keeping an eye on in the chat and we'll jump on it. Let me change my coloring here. And Mario, if you, as always, if you see something, definitely. Yeah, I'm looking for questions. I haven't seen any yet. Oh, uh, oh yeah. So beyond that, um, I was looking at the price of uh, metals the other day through or paying attention just for, just for sheer entertainment, just to see what they're trying to do. And I put up a chart. Uh, where is this chart? I'll put it up here. So this is uh, silver over the last uh, two years since the great lockdown lows, as I call yeah. it. And to see that yesterday we got to 1770 or something. Now we're up to 18, 16. But just seeing how much of a concerted effort it was to make sure that they didn't break beyond this 2868 yeah. and they've been working hard oh well, yeah <laughs> and uh, i think it was in the first quarter of this year uh, uh i think it was the office of controller of the currency mm -hmm. uh, the uh, amount of uh notional uh, precious metals derivatives by the big banks it mm -hmm. went up it's like a hockey stick increase because yeah. they want to keep uh, gold and silver down uh, from breaking 2000 and maybe even you know 30 for silver yeah. So uh, they're going to run out of ammo, though, the, because people are continuing to buy physical. Mm -hmm. I, I see that uh, premiums for uh, in the U.S. are still really high right. for silver. Uh, not junk. I mean, you know, generic round, g generic silver is six or seven dollars. Eagles is yes, the Eagles like forty. I mean, that's huge, seventy right. eighty percent. Yeah, that's it reminds me of uh, 08, 2008, when the market. Uh, went down. You, yeah. you can really get almost no any physical, and it was like a hundred hundred percent premium. So I think we're we're close to uh, bottoming in gold and silver. Uh, I don't know when, but it's and uh, based upon the, the comment you mentioned about the amount of the paper derivatives that were created that looked like a hockey stick. You know, I assume that since they're, that's tolerable, they can probably keep that on for some time until something breaks. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And I think they've been covering those shorts because they're mostly short positions. Yeah. So, yeah, I think there's a question here from me. Uh, it says, do you guys think the debt bubble will explode soon? Would you keep cash on hand? Uh, I was talking about this last night and I personally, just based upon 
how far we've gotten to this point and they've been able to hold things down when it comes to the, the, the Federal Reserve note, I, it, because the world still needs dollars for the most part and they're still dependent upon them, I think cash still has a – it ha, definitely has utility because most oh, yeah, people don't but, know what's uh, the problem. I, I think it's good to have some cash out of the system as well, yeah. cash at home, uh, because uh, you never know. Uh, they could close – close the banking system. That uh, they could block you as well if they don't like you, like they did with the truckers in Canada. Mm -hmm. And I, I heard from one of my viewers that his uh, account, broken, brokerage account was frozen for no reason. Right. So you have to be careful. So yeah, it's good to maybe have some cash on hand. Whether there will, I think there could be a, a problem in the bond and debt market be, uh, because yields are rising quite sharply. Uh, they're still uh, under control, but they it could very easily they could very easily lose control, right. and it could happen soon. Right, the probability of a banking event is extremely high, and it's getting even higher by the day, in my opinion. So, uh, let me see here. I don't want to butcher that name, and I think that is the that is the Norwegian Krona, if I'm not mistaken. Am yeah. Right? Okay, yeah. so since I'm thinking of buying a house, seven hundred thousand Norwegian kroner, about seventy thousand USD. I have enough gold and silver to cash it out, or should I borrow the money? Not so much. Thanks. Uh, well, if if that's Ger Olji, he's a, a long time listener to my channel, uh, of my channel. Uh, I mean, if you are comfortable with uh, your financial situation, if you you think you're gonna keep getting a steady income. Uh, then maybe get some kind of mortgage. Uh, keep try to keep your gold and silver, but uh, wow. yeah, because if inflation keeps going up and you're comfortable with what you're doing with your income, uh, that mortgage is gonna gonna become worth less and less. Right. So that's that's a great yeah. I definitely I would you know I would use somebody else's. I.e. I would borrow and use that debt rather than use my own actual liquid gold and silver because that's meant to be something you would fall back on down the line or use in a transition period and you, is that you, uh you yeah. get the most out of system while you can basically Go ahead. and if that is uh not your primary residence i don't know if it is but if it's like a, a secondary residence then yeah it, it if you're not buying it to live in it then yeah borrow a bit not not a whole lot uh but if you're buying it to live in there then be careful i would say correct and Dwayne Clark, 100% there. These are just opinions, not any type of advice <laughs> whatsoever. Just Oh, yeah. No, this is our opinion, of course. Uh, all right. Let's get some more questions out there. Uh, let me see. Mike Morrow, not financial advisors. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, of course not. Gassara, the Gassara, yeah, this is uh, Nassara and Gassara are a waste of time. So think someone asked about Nassara and Gassara. Um, I think that was the name of that's the name of that's oh, their sorry, name. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm oh, sorry, Nasara Gasara. Um, it's a trap. What else we got here? Uh, it says, How was Zimbabwe? How will Zimbabwe gold coin affect the value of these 150 trillion notes? Uh, <laughs> not at well, all. <laughs> what I've read about uh, the, the Zimbabwe coins, yeah, is that it's trying to uh, basically get people from being too dependent on the US dollar. So they're mm -hmm. trying to give people maybe a you know like a, a an option. Right. And it's interesting because maybe it, even the Zimbabweans don't trust the dollar anymore and they want their people to be protected. Right. You know? And I, I would I would I would hope I would like to believe that. And I have and, I, and it could get definitely will be true. But as of now I think there's only been forty five hundred coins minted. And they're talking about doing lower denominations, which is great. And my mm -hmm. thesis as thesis is until the average Joe can actually go to their bank and buy a five dollar incremented gold something, then that those coins only serve the people who have money. And Zimbabwe, oh yeah, that, that's the, uh, the other thing I heard. Uh, I saw a headline about that as well, saying that it's to favor the the, the cronies of the government the, these coins. So you never really know, right? Now, and so one thing I'm a big proponent of in utilizing technology, say, for example, a great test for the Zimbabwean move to gold or bringing back gold to their currency is to make it is to use like the, like the gold banks or put it in a note, put it in something where it actually is gold in, in its nature, but more affordable for average people. And those start circulating, then I would be 100 percent on board and believing that this is really for the people 
rather than you know some other mm-hmm. hidden agenda behind it. So, but yeah. we got some time, so I, I'll definitely let us see what the smallest denomination will be come mm. come, come soon. Uh, Ryan has a question: How how bad will the depression get, and when the Fed pivots, will metal spike? Well, I, I don't even think that uh, the Fed needs to pivot mm-hmm. for metals to to go up, even though a lot of people think it does because. Uh, if you look at the set in the 70s, like from 1977 to 1980, uh, the Fed was raising rates and gold and silver are going up. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, people think that uh, higher rates are, are bad for gold and silver. But if you look at the uh, 1970s, I think rates were on four or five percent in the beginning of the 70s. Mm-hmm. Uh, gold was at 35 an ounce. Silver was a a dollar twenty nine or something, and then by the end of the decade, uh, we were at double digit interest rates, and gold was at eight fifty, and silver was at fifty. So, yeah, as for the depression, um, yeah, I think it will be bad because there's no way out of this Mm -hmm. inflation policy that we've had for fifty years, and it's either going to be. hyperinflation or a collapse uh oh, yeah. deflationary collapse i think yeah and that's where what's interesting about this current environment is that with with the use of technology and the intentional purpose of having cbdc's come about at this particular time to me this was always a part of the plan to where i i think it's going to be more of a it's going to be a major lifestyle adjustment and i've always said before i think the u.s can literally be downgraded especially if the reserve status is lost, therefore easy credit access is no longer available. You know, what would life be like if you only were able to spend what you had on hand and you were not able to go out and buy and and increase your lifestyle tenfold based upon credit? Like you had to live within your means on a day-to-day basis. That's not a bad thing. (laughs) That's not a bad thing at all, but it'd be a shock, a major shock where, you know, (laughs) you weren't able to upgrade everything annually, annually like you like to do. Yeah, so it'd be different, but I think that's it's healthy. That'd be a definitely a healthy reboot for humanity. But once again, it's a sinister move behind that. So anyway, uh, what else we got here? Are you guys uh what is this? Uh Super Seamstress says, Are you guys <laughs> being a threat to democracy? <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is America is not a democracy, it's a republic. Right. But it once again at this current moment. You know, what, what What even does that mean? Because government has hijacked us, taken over everything to where they've they control the narrative. And so, you know, what, having elected uh, officials, we're electing people who've been already been chosen. And so you probably- know, one of the things that really hurt America, I know the Fed, you know, the Federal Reserve Act did, but also the fact that uh, senators used to be uh, picked by the uh, state legislatures. So they were not uh, directly elected by the people. Mm-hmm. So what that did, uh, that kind of uh, divided the power. You know, the House of Representatives. That's a you were elected by the people, mm-hmm. but the senators, uh, they're elected by the state legislatures. So that's like a that's that puts a break on on the on the people a little bit. Yeah. It kind of balances things out, and that's how a republic is supposed to work. People might think that's not democratic, but mm-hmm. But now it's gone so much the other way where all votes are bought by big right. corporations. And it's not really a republic anymore. It's a dictatorship. Right. Well, and not just the U.S., here in the U.K. as well. Right. I, and I think just the whole democracy narrative is is, is failing because people have mm-hmm. lost confidence in elected officials in general. So that's why Biden oh, yeah. go out here talk about democracy under, under under threat. And and then of course they're trying to make it, you know, make America great. People are the reason why. And that video that you shared about uh let me pull it up right here. Uh that was interesting because the guy who had been interviewed here says that, you know, we have a president who hates half of America, referring to the mega crowd or whatever. <laughs> and so just talking about basically how he's intentionally selling a divide of our country. And making it appear as like people who love the Constitution, love having gun ownership, love having sound money, yeah. are people who don't want our country to move forward. <laughs> well, he'll probably blame uh, these people for the, uh, the hyperinflation that's coming. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. All right. What else, well, any other questions out there? What we got? Is are they moving? Uh, here's something about. I noticed that I think the twenty and fifty pound notes. 
uh, the older is it the older versions? Yeah, they're not removing. Version? They're not removing twenty and fifty pound notes. They're changing the makeup. From no, 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 no. They've no? already changed it yeah. years, quite a f two, three years ago, mm -hmm. and now we have uh, this uh, plastic one, polymer paper. Yeah, yeah. Paul, but what they're doing now is that if you still have the old one and you've had e uh, two years or three years to get rid of it, then that's not going to be. Uh, you know, you have to hand those in to exchange it, mm. but they're not removing the 20 and 50 pound notes that we use. Right. I guess that's a, a bad thing for people uh, who have done things that are not, you know, above board and they've kept <laughs> a lot of cash, but I'm, I'm sure they'll find a way to uh, get rid of it. <laughs> but I, I, I'm not sure. I think it's in the next month or two they're doing this or end yeah. of September. Here is uh, it says if we have a bubble burst, will the government be able to pay for welfare benefits anymore? What happens to these people in a hyperinflationary situation? No, yeah, they, they, well, the welfare state will collapse if the currency collapses. There will be no welfare state. Right, and those programs people, the people are going to starve. Say again, yeah. You know the food stamps that will be gone. Right, and I think uh, earlier this week there was a glitch to where a couple hours it went out. And I, you know, I didn't hear any mainstream stories talking about the black backlash from that. But it's good to say a lot of people swiped and nothing went off. You know, when people base their lifestyle, build their lifestyles upon government assistance, you know, mm -hmm. it only spells that much more pain if it's taken away or removed or whatever. And those would be the primary candidates for people who would sign up and stand in line to do whatever the government says in order to get their, you know, their, get their needs met by the government. So the other thing that will happen is pensions are gonna, you know are going to be worthless if there is a hyperinflation. You yeah. hear stories about the Weimar hyperinflation. Uh, one guy, his father had a life insurance policy and the, he died, mm -hmm. but, and he was, or he had a savings policy or something he was supposed to pay for his uh, college education. And by the time it came to pay for college, he said he could only buy a really nice lunch mm -hmm. with it. Whoo, baby, that's real, real world that's experience. Good. That's so, why you need to keep uh, stacking. Get your weight up. Mm -hmm. uh, it says Mario. Do you see a half dollar? Yeah, I got a couple. I, I love my, I love my oldies. I got a couple oldies. I got me some a nineteen twenty three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these, uh, these are two sixty fours. They're quite good condition. Yeah. Ooh, still shiny. Yeah. Uh, it says, Mario, do you see a scenario where the U.S. would default on its debt or uh, is the plan to use hyperinflation as a means to reduce the debt? Because if they did, rates would be higher. Yeah, countries can default by inflating. So, yeah, the, like Alan Greenspan said that a few years ago in, a, in an interview and other people oh. looked at him like that. We can just print it. Right. Yeah, it, won't pay, it won't buy you much, but, you know, you need $150 for a coffee. So right uh what else we got here uh let me see us will be last to collapse uh yeah i do agree with that one money won't buy operation warp speed feed speed food boxes uh mario if it's in a bank it's not cash it's digital <laughs> uh well a bank in the bank actually actually cash is uh gold and silver coins uh the paper money we have is a promissory note mm -hmm. for cash. <laughs> if you want to be really exact, uh, the, the word for cash is actually wrong that we use today. But mm -hmm. anyway, it, it, your your funds in the bank are not yours. They're like a unsecu an unsecured loan to the bank legally here in the UK and in the US and in Europe. Yeah. So it, it's not really safe in the banks and they can just uh, like shut it down anytime they want. All right. It's not yours. I think the, I used an example earlier when somebody asked that question on, on a on a talk 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 show part was that a great example would be just look at what's happening in the crypto space with the exchanges. Like people thinking mm. they're putting the funds and they're safe, but then you read the fine print. You know, once you turn it over to them, it's there. It's their asset. They yeah, there's it. there's that. Uh, was it Celsius? The, yeah. the, they they froze everyone's uh, accounts and they went bust. Right. So there, there, and that, and there's a lot of stuff with that particular company there behind the scenes that 
doesn't look as bad as the mainstream because the mainstream is jumping on it and using it as a primary target, saying that this is what happened when you don't regulate crypto. We need government regulation. So they're trying to sell mm-hmm. government re- regulation. But Pagan Warrior, uh, Pagan Warrior says, What's your magic number for 10 year yield to freeze it all up? Well, I think I spoke about this earlier today in my live stream on my live stream. Uh, and I said that it depends how quickly it happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, though, 4%. Uh, but before the end of the year would put a, a real uh, um, would be a, a problem for the whole system. Right now, we're at 3.2. Yeah, so we just wait and see. But I, I'm anticipating some type of event <laughs> that will distract us from that and probably force a pivot or do something new. We Something we've yet to expect or even foresee. Questions, how do we get a new government without a revolution? Whew, that's a Well, that's a, maybe uh, Thomas Jefferson could answer that for you. <laughs> what did he say? Do you know what he said? Uh, no, no. Sometimes you need to spill the blood of patriots to, to get you know to get rid of tyranny or something like that. So I, I'm not sure whether you can uh, get uh, a, a true. And I'm not like pushing people to to do this. Right. It's just what he said. Sometimes uh, you can't really uh, get rid of tyranny without a revolution that's right that's, it, just seems, it just seems like you th- think about think about be, uh, but it could be a bloodless revolution like you ha- happened in eastern europe in the late 80s when the soviet union collapsed who knows yeah. i think at this current moment the system is too big and what's at stake for the forces at play here is too great to where they're gonna definitely share so they're gonna want they're gonna want some blood it won't be a peaceful like they lay down and turn over and and the new world order will not be accomplished. Like, and I think that yeah. stuff gets to the biblical side of things where it's, it's no turning back. You know, we're moving forward. So, uh, yeah. So like here in Europe, we have all this energy crisis, all this problem, mm-hmm. but and in the U S you don't have that as much, but I think politically you have a much bigger problem than we do. You're so divided and that could, could be a bad thing too. Yeah, it definitely is. And they're using, and they're literally using that against us as of right now. Somebody says stop paying taxes. I well, think that that will that will end up that's going to end up occurring anyway because if the system tanks the way that they're trying to bring it down, nobody will have anything to pay on, and that's a part of the whole reset of them basically issuing a whole new currency line CBDC, and they're going to do a direct withdrawal of taxes. That's what their plan is. So they know that people ain't going to be paying taxes real, real soon because they're not going to have nothing to pay taxes on the way they're trying to do this. So. But then again, we'll see how that system is when they can withdraw it automatically. How many people will be forced to download that app to use whatever it is they're offering us? And that's the part where we want to get away from. That's why take advantage of the time to get everything you need out of the system so that you're not as dependent upon whatever they roll out when stuff hits the fan. Uh, what else? We have about uh, 47 minutes. You ready to dial back, Mario? Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, so for those who are plugged in, hopefully you guys got some good value out of these uh, this dialogue here. Hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already. Uh, Manico64, go check them out if you haven't. And uh, any any words of wisdom you want to part with before we uh, head into the, the beautiful sunny weekend? Yeah, right maybe, uh, maybe you guys were here in the beginning. And what I said is sometimes you just got to go out there and smell the flowers, <laughs> enjoy yourself. Because sometimes we can get caught caught looking at things, reading and like worrying about things. Yeah. And I think if you're prepared and you know what's happening, that's the important thing. If you know what's happening, mm-hmm. uh, it helps you make the right decisions. Everything will be fine because these kind of events have happened uh, so many times uh, in other countries. And, and, and people usually come back. Yes, it's not nice and things won't be the same, but it's not the end of the world. Right. I agree, man. So those are definitely words of wisdom worth parting on. Well, everybody, uh, enjoy your weekend. Be blessed. Be safe. Uh, Definitely appreciate the remainder of summer as best you can. Enjoy it because uh, they're they're setting us up for an extremely cold winter, depending on where you're at. So uh, having some alternatives to for energy and things of that nature definitely should be on your radar if you haven't done it already. But anyway, be blessed. Be safe. Enjoy your weekend. See you guys later. Peace. Bye.